Hello, welcome back to the Football Terrace. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're here to talk about Paul Pogba being Juventus's number one target and their main piece of business they want to conclude this summer. This has come from the mouth of Fabrizio Romano. We know the most credible transfer journalist on the planet. And also another daily dose of the Jaden Sancho BS. We're going to go through that with you. We promised we would uh, because it isn't fair what's being printed uh, and the story that keeps going. The story isn't moving. The story is where it's been for weeks. We're going to delve into that little bit, little bit in a moment. Uh, do me a big, big thing and big, big favor. Not a big thing, really. Hit the like button. Please hit the share button as well. Remember tonight, we've got a big show tonight at 7 p.m. We might just do a special. But we have Babs from, uh, Babs from AFTV on who is making an outrageous claim outrageous claim of who he thinks the most overrated player in the Premier League is for the past 10 years. So make sure you're tuning in then. It's going to be epic. And sorry, I'm a little bit late going live. I was just reading Twitter, uh, <laughs> trending is Scouse Twitter. And <laughs> Liverpudlians have, um, uh, they've, they've literally destroyed some kid's life. Let's say some kid is an adult um, to a point where his family have had to shut their family website, like business web, like website down. Uh, they've attacked, they've gone up, they've gone to the guy's girlfriend, everything. He basically took a picture of Boris Johnson in a Chelsea shirt, holding up the Premier League in front of um, a photograph taken of the, the, Hill, the Hillsborough disaster. Sickening picture, disgusting picture. There's no defending it. And they've literally, they've found him, his home address. They've been sending, I think some, they've sent like over a over hundred separate pizza orders to his house today. I saw an order him like a brass to his house, everything. They've, they've gone mad on that. But um, I'm not necessarily, con I'm not condoning doxing him and putting his address on the internet. Um, but the, the other side to that argument is if you kick a hornet's nest, you're probably going to get stung. Uh, so that's why I'm a little bit late. And also, I don't know what that is. It must be from my daughter. From, look at that stain on the top as I go live on the internet. But anyway, we're going to delve into it. Hope you're all well. As I say, please make sure you hit the like button. Uh, and the share button as well. Very, very important to the, the channel and platform that you do that. Big shout here to Marble Halls TV, one of our members, Lincoln, our moderator, uh, Ultra67. I am very well. Thank you for tuning in. What has everyone done in quarantine today? I'll be honest with you, today I have had a little swim in, in my pool today. It's a little cold. It hasn't quite reached the temperature it needs to be yet. It was only like 24 degrees, so it was still a little bit chilly, but it was nice. I thought I'd go in and have a little paddle. It was nice. Uh, cooks a couple of burgers on the barbecue for lunch. And now I'm doing this and then I'm going to go for a jog. And then we've got tonight's show. So, yeah, brilliant. Terry, you always come along when I'm eating her food and a show. Thanks. Well, John, maybe that's because I'm stalking you. Maybe that's because I'm looking through your window right now. Well, that's not true, is it? Because I'm sitting here. Unless... <laughs> that, that will work out but yeah okay i'm stalking you got camera in your house uh marble hall says i'm planning to go out for a walk the old bill cannot stop me is my exercise <laughs> that bojo said i can have yeah i know y you can do that the thing is like people going out and walking going to a park that ain't even the issue it's people congregating together and then if one stops another one does then the third fourth and before you know it, it's crowded. And that's, I don't understand why people don't get that concept. But if I walk, I'm, I don't live near a beach. But if I drove to a beach right now and it was full of people, I'd just turn around and go home. And equally, you should be driving anywhere because you risk it. So I was talking to a policeman today. And uh, basically, he was saying how they don't like people having unnecessary, unnecessary kind of travel in case you have an accident, in case, in case you break down. You have to call up the RAC over. And that means someone's got to be near you. You're risking his life for unessential travel. That's kind of what that means. But essentially, the stories are out there today. Paul Pogba is the main target of Juventus. I doubt that. I doubt... Uh, sorry, no, no, let me re rephrase that. I'm not doubting it. I'm not surprised that Juve have made him the number one target. Do you think he'll leave? That's the question. We know the story has credibility to here, but being Juve's number one target doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go. 
What are your views? What are your opinions? Remember, Man United are in a very strong position. They can trigger the renewal in his contract. United are catch rich, rich during this corona situation. I want to know. Uh, we've got Jason Conway on the line. Jason, uh, what's your views and opinions on this? Pogba to Juventus. It needs to happen. Okay. As a fan, personally, it needs to happen. Because I'm not, I'm not ready for no Bruno Fernandes, Pogba, Fred Midfield. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wanting that. Yeah, okay, so you're desperate you for it. You're desperate for it yeah, to happen for that reason. Yeah, this has to happen. Yeah, no, I, I, I get, I get why rivals will be buzzing by this news. Um, do you think he will go though? Do you think that will happen? I don't, I don't think he'll go back to Juventus. If he leaves, I think he'll go to Madrid. Personally, mm. it's an interesting. It, it is an interesting one for me. I, I want Pogba to stay, but only if he is one. 110% committed to the cause. If, if he doesn't want to be at Man United, if he's if he's pining to leave for whatever reason, I'm, I'm not even I'm not even really bothered by the reason. It's just a case. If you don't want to be here, man has got to go. Even if it's a case of, oh, all right, maybe I'll stay. I don't even want maybe. I want categorically, I want to be here. I want to stay. And there is talk of that happening. If he doesn't, then, then I do want him to leave. No hard feelings and move on. But yeah, I'm the reverse to you. I just sit there and think Pogba, Fred, Bruno, Sancho, Martial, Rashford. That six is... It can't happen. It just can't happen. That's crazy. Absolutely yeah, crazy. pretty much. Absolutely crazy. At first, when you first said um, mm. that that could uh, challenge for the league, I was like, nah, no chance. You, 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 you're overhyping it. But then I actually thought of it and I, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I was thinking that actually could happen, you know. If we think about it, because we were always, um, if Pub was playing higher up midfield, you know, near number 10 role, then you probably get, then you would get the best out of him. So, yeah, there's a comment here that's worth looking at. It says that Terry, Real Madrid have never signed a player owned by Mino Riola. So don't think he will go to Real Madrid. Now, I, I'm not challenging uh, this. That's from the dugout football. I'm not saying he's wrong. I don't know whether it's true or untrue. If it is, that could be significant because I think if you look at Liverpool as an example, my understanding is that Jurgen Klopp doesn't want or ne will never do business with me and Ariola uh, as well. Um, that can obviously be a help mm. to you if, if your club's trying to keep or, or buy a yeah. player and you are willing to do that business with him. Um, it, I always find interesting about that. If you've got like Real Madrid, don't do business with him. Fergie wouldn't do business with him. Klopp doesn't want to do business with him. It always strikes me as strange as to why players gravitate towards him. He clearly... We he, wouldn't. Arsenal wouldn't do business with him, but that's for completely other different reasons. But um, yeah, well, he, 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 want, he wants too money. much money. He wants too much money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in relation um, to that, but um, but no, I, again, I, I don't know whether it is true um, or not, I, and I'm not challenging the, the, the comment comment guy to put that in. But if it is, and they don't do business with him, that's a weird then one. Again, have, has like has there ever been a Pogba? If you know what I mean, for them to for Real Madrid, like, has he ever had a player? That they I'll desperately needed. That. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that that's the other needed. side of it, isn't it? That's what I was about to say. It's that case of, I understand that maybe they ha haven't in the... I'll just move my camera here, sorry. I, I get I get that maybe in the past they haven't done it, but it depends mm. who they want. You know, if your number one target is with him, are you willing to yield? I would, by the way, I would respect Real Madrid if, they, if, they've, got a pro, if they've got a policy to say we don't deal with him. If they turn down mm. their number one player... Um, because he was managed by Mina Ariola, I would respect their uh, morality in that. It would it would make a lot of sense, but it's a difficult one when you need a player desperately. I know that Juve are going to look at him. It's crazy for Juve, though. I mean, I know they made a lot. They did make a lot of money on him when Man United bought him, mm. but they they gave like forty million pound of that transfer fee to Mina Ariola as costs. So they only That's made true. sort of forty to fifty million pound. Um, and again, it's hard to work out how much of that is actually profit. Wait. Because sorry, go. On. Is the story the story is him going to Juve, isn't it? Yes, yes. But what I'm saying I, is, yes, I I think Juve Juve needed more than Madrid, and they're probably willing to spend more. I remember I was I was listening to a caller who, who called like not long ago, and he said Juve's midfield is packed, and they've already got enough class players, but they actually haven't. If you actually look into what Juventus are doing, they're not happy with the players that that in the midfield that they've got because yeah. they haven't really. Well, Gabriel here <laughs> says. Gabriel here says, how would they even afford Pogba? Do you know uh, what Ramsey and Rebio are on a week? Of course, but listen, I mean, signing Paul Pogba would have conditions to it 
from a from a business yeah. standpoint of Juve, it would mean we're going to go for him, but we need to move those two players on at the same time. And equally, what Juve may end up having to do with, with an Aaron Ramsey, and this does exist in football, is where they end up saying, right, okay, let's just say Chelsea want to buy Aaron Ramsey. I'm not saying they do. I'm throwing Chelsea out there as an example. Chelsea say we want Aaron Ramsey. Aaron Ramsey is willing to move, but they're only willing to pay him 180 grand a week. What may then happen, because he's on 400,000 pound a week at Juve, is Juve and Aaron Ramsey come to a decision where they say, okay, well, we'll pay you. You're, you're going to be 220 uh, pounds down per week um, in terms of salary. So what we'll do, you're not going to play game time here if you stay, but if you move, we'll pay you 100,000 pound a week still for the remainder of your contract. So it will save 300 grand a week for Juve. Aaron Ramsey still gets a hell of a lot of money per week, maybe not quite as much as four hundred thousand pounds. So they, they, they'll come to an arrangement because the thing most wow. fo- most football players don't just want to sit on the bench and pick up a paycheck. They want to oh, yeah, they, they want to play football. So I, I get your point here, but Juve will have already been working. They'll already have it sort of their ducks in a row in relation to that. The one difficult thing for Juve will be what happens with Corona, what happens to the finances in relation to football in Italy, they do not have the same level of TV income that, that the Premier League has to, as, yeah. as a fallback. So it really does depend, but I, I make no bones about it. I think they're definitely looking at him. I think they definitely want to re-sign Paul Pogba. There's just going to be lots of different factors. Can they afford it? I don't him? think, from, he's from Pogba's point of view, I don't think he would go back there. Do you I not? think the only element he would, because right now, he left to come to United to help United. Well, I'm, I'm assuming he did to help them win titles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that hasn't worked out. I think we'd stay for another year, like when the season does get resumed, you stay for next season, whenever that starts. Yeah. And then if that doesn't go to plan and they're not challenging, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if they don't win, but if they're not, if he doesn't see progress, quotation marks, and they're not challenging, then I think he'll be like, I don't want to go back to Juve because I've already been there. He probably would choose to go to Madrid. But then Madrid are also in a position where do they need him or Mbappe slash Neymar more? Yeah, and that, that's where it becomes a real... Because they can't buy both. Of, of course, absolutely. And I think that there must be a part of that in the back of Pogba's mind. There has yeah. to, for me, there has to be that element of, oh, if we sign Sancho. You know, if he comes back into this team, if the, this is all predicated on... If the season starts again and he plays, and he mm. plays alongside Bruno and there's a bit of a click, and he clicks into that system and it suddenly looks like, wow, United could be a force next year. And he's kind of told, you know, Sancho's coming. He's in that position. And what also puts pr- pressure on Pogba, and it's such an interesting debate, is the Jack Grealish situation. Now, Jack Grealish, for me, is he's not as good as Paul Pogba. I would never make that claim. Uh, of course not. But he can come in from an attacking point of view, and I think he can do a good job for United. Pogba yeah. then has to make that decision of, okay, do I go back to Juve or do I go to Real Madrid? And it may be not work there. If he stays in play... So, if you were him. Well, this is the point I'm alluding to. So you, you can make that decision go, right, I'm not being happy the last 18 months. Football yeah. hasn't been great. Team are not progressing. I'm getting on. Let's go to a club at Juve. Let, you'll win league titles at Juve. There's no doubt. But it's almost, they, they almost walk it every year anyway. Is that now, really? The only, the only but, but, let me finish the point I'm making. So like, they pretty much walk it every year anyway. Is that really going to, it's a bit like going to Paris Saint-Germain and winning a league title or, or, or Celtic and winning a league title. It's a case of like, mm, yeah, but you knew you were going to do that. Is it really going to elevate you in your status within football? I don't think so. So there's an element of, I can go somewhere and maybe win something more than I can at United. But then the other side of it's going to be, if he comes into this team, if we restart this season, and it's clicking and it's moving. And he's now part of this Man United team that's dominating play, scoring and creating goals. And knowing that Jaden Sancho is coming in, it, it, there is that case of, do I want to stay and then have someone like Jack Grealish come in and then Man United go on a madness and start challenging for titles, going deep into Champions Leagues, maybe winning some of these titles. And I've left and I'm not part of it. That would be the fear factor. You know, almost didn't Michael Owen leave Liverpool and a year later Liverpool won the Champions League? Uh, you, know, you get where I'm coming from. There's almost an element yeah. of, you know, look at Philip Coutinho leaving leaving Liverpool when he did. Does Paul Pogba want to be Philip Coutinho? I think the only reason our people go to clubs like PSG, Juventus is to win the like, They don't care about the league because they know that's going to be sorted. It's, it's deep, simply for the Champions League. Coutinho went for the same thing, I guess. To be honest, yeah, the but, that, but that's really the point. That, that is a, that's the point I'm alluding to. Pogba's in that position now where he and, and he's decision, and I won't hold it against him. He is now. We have to see what happens with this Man United team. 
But the impact yeah. that Bruno made, the fact that we're getting better as a team, defensively conceding less goals, scoring more. Sancho looks like he's on the way. We haven't even delved, delved into that level of bullshit story that's come out today. Oh, yeah. What was the story? Well, the, 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 the other side of the story today with Jaden Sancho has been, it's another one of these coronavirus is going to damage finances so Man United might not buy him. Keep telling me, it's just <laughs> bullshit. It's just media chatting nonsense. United have the money to pay pre Corona money. And of course, if we had the money, if, if we still got the money to pay pre Corona prices, of course, we've got the money to pay post coronavirus virus uh, yeah. prices because we've got the money. It's not an issue for United. It's not a story. Just every day, like I said, you're going to see a different piece of bullshit saying boost, transfer, blow, Bru boost, transfer, blow. There isn't one. Everything's done. All United need to keep doing is continue talking to Jaden to make sure he's not getting his eye turned elsewhere. And when they get the opportunity to sit down with Dortmund, which won't happen now because nobody knows what's happening with the finances of football, by mid-May we will know. Then they'll be able to start negotiating prices and understanding what's going on. Because by mid to end of May, we're going to know whether football's starting again or not. We're going to know whether it's going to be behind closed doors. And clubs will have a closer understanding of the financial implications that's going to have on them. And of course, if no, none of the big, big sides are going to be overly financially damaged prices of players is not going to drop or change too much at all. So there is no new story around Jaden Sancho. Any paper, any Twitter account, any YouTuber claiming, oh, there's been an advance here, nothing. Everything no. has been where it's been for the last few weeks. I just, I, but I'm going to keep calling out the bullshit when I hear it. But on the Pogba thing, let me just round up and I'll, and I'll throw it back over to you. I just think that he has that choice now. He's in Philip Coutinho's position. He can go mm. to Barca, he can go to Bayern, he can go to a big team like that. In this case, it's Juve and and Real Madrid, and he will win a couple of major trophies there. There's no doubt about it. But will it? What's it? Will he just become like Philip Coutinho, kind of, and and every other player at that club, or is he going to be the reason they go on to win things? Is he going to be a superstar there? He's got the opportunity, maybe, to do that at Man United. Then we don't know if it's going to click like that. He is going to have to see what he's seeing internally. You may think no, it's just been a bit luck, and I'll, I'll, I'll respect his decision. But that's what he has got to make here, Paul. Do I go away and become a superstar at Real Madrid or, or Juve or an every or just a, another player at the club? Or do I stay at Man United, part of this group that's growing, and maybe be part of something absolutely special? Do I want do I want to do that? You know, do, or do I want to be Philip Coutinho? That's what he's got a way up. I mean, if you're in that position and you're Pogba, yeah. what decision do you make right now? And that's it's hard to do hypotheticals, but no, just forget Pogba. If you were you in that position, what would you do? I don't know exactly what I'd do. I would wait to I'll see what business transfer business goes on. I see how the team improves, and if I, if we're if we're not challenging for titles, okay, Premier League, or making it to the last stages of the FA Cup, um, and depending on what happens in the season, if it gets finished, let's say if it, it finishes and you make the Champions League, then so you'll be the Champions League for next season. I'm staying through next year, seeing how that goes, how far we go there, and if we don't, if, we don't, if there's no progression and we still get, and obviously this is United of it, obviously, and you're like you're getting kicked out of the last sixteen or and you're finishing fourth, then then I'd leave. But where I'd go to, that's the that's uh, I don't know. Personally, if I'm him, I'm going to Juve. I wouldn't go to Madrid. Well, he know, the thing with going to Juve is he knows it. He knows what he's done there before. He knows the area that you know. He'll know the restaurants. He'll know the culture. The the I mean, the risk he's going around with. It. Look at look at Eden Hazard. And I'm, there's there's been very little dialogue about Eden Hazard, and I know that he's had Actually, injuries. With Hazard, when you know when he had the big injury, and then he came back, and then it was like what three, four weeks? No, it was like a few weeks before the Man City game. He like a few games. He had like a few games after the injury. He was actually playing well, and the yeah. Madrid fans were happy and excited that he's back because they thought they could turn it around at the Etihad. Yeah, and maybe maybe he can. And and I'm I'm ex the thing is I don't I don't want Eden Hazard to fail at Real Madrid. Point being, Pogba, it can be anything. It can be injuries. It can be not yeah. settling in. It can be just not being a right fit. Pogba knows he was the right fit at Juve back then. But will it be different now for him at Juve? That's the question well, he has I to ask himself. Because when he was there before, he was surrounded by what I would call one of the best midfields in Europe of the last 10 years, as an example, oh, yes. if he goes to Juve now is, and this is like me asking you, is the quality of yeah. midfield going to be the same? It, uh, the, the, the only reason I said he would go there is not, it's not because of the midfield, it's because of Ronaldo. I genuinely think, I believe that he, the only reason he would go there is because of the, like, it's, it's, it's his factor, him being there. Cause he knows that if he goes there, 
and he's playing with him, there's a big chance that they can win the Champions League. That would be the only reason he goes back. Not from not not, not to uh, not to win the Serie A because he's already done that. Copy Italia, he's already done that. Mm. He's simply inside for the Champions League. And that makes sense. I get that. Uh, Jace, thank you very much for coming on again, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks, man. Top man, take care. I've got a comment here actually from uh, Twisted Bubba who says, Terry, will financial fair play rules change because of the current situation? Uh, I, I, my understanding is they've already relaxed them. Now, that there, there hasn't been any great clarity on what that looks like, but of course, they, they're going to have to relax them because teams have spent money. So over the next... So when you buy a player, most players are bought via amortization. You saw that the... the, the even though the Daily Mail still like loves to sensationalize. So based on Man United signing under Oli, they owe like 160 odd million pounds of that. That's because it's all paid via amortization and, and Man United don't do it in monthly installments. They make a block payment at the end of each year, which means the first big payments for the majority of players that they've signed is going to be this summer. So of course, if incomes drop dramatically for Premier League clubs, but they owe all this money, which they're contracted to pay, there's a chance they may make more significant losses. Not Man United, excuse me for you here. Not Man United, but other teams that, that whose income is a lot less. So they're going to have to relax the rules on financial fair play because people are going to be caught out, not for mismanagement of the football club, just because there's been a global pandemic. So they will relax. They will probably allow people to make bigger losses for a longer period of time, but only based on outgoings that have been committed to prior to Corona. So if some team suddenly goes, right, okay, this is, there'll be a stipulation in this. So if someone goes, right, let's overspend for the next two or three years now, because we'll be protected because there's going to be no financial fair play. I don't think it will be as weak as that. There'll almost be an element of, okay, we'll extend the losses by 30, 40, 50 million pounds. And you can do that up to a maximum of three or four years, but only based on like Man United situation that you pay big money for AWB, Bruno, uh, as an example, they did also get something wrong. They, they mentioned they had it at Man United's price was overinflated because they spoke about uh, Harry Maguire. Man United paid cash for Harry Maguire. So they paid that money up front. They owed zero pounds on Harry Maguire uh, as far as I'm concerned. So, yes, it will have uh, an impact, but um, they'll work on that as they move forward. It may they may even decide just to scrap it. I don't think they should, as I've said, because then some teams could exploit this situation to overspend, lose money, have cash pumped in by owners, you know, and, and then walk away, you know, which, which, which like financially dope things again, which they, I don't think they want to allow. So there does need to be a happy medium put in there. It really, really does. A uh, comment here says if United kept Pogba and got Kane in with Sancho, they would get, um, get way more points next season, may even challenge, but I don't know if Oli is the right man to title challenge. I could be proved wrong. I think that's a fair comment to make. Kay, I, I, I can't see us affording Kane, Sancho, and keeping Pogba. That's a hell of a lot. You are talking 250 to 300 million pounds in fees. You're talking 50, 60 million pounds in, 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 in agent fees. You're talking maybe, maybe a bit less than that. You're talking 300 grand a week. For, for Harry Kane in salary, 250 grand a week. For, talking half a million pound a week in salary, you know, two million quid a month for the both of them. So that's 24 million pounds. You're looking at a deal in a year that's going to cost, well, you're not going to pay it all in one year. I mean, let's add that up. I mean, what 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 you're saying here, we're saying, 100, let's, let's just do, we'll be conservative, 115 million for Jaden Sancho, let's say, plus 130 million for Harry Kane. I'm just going to throw those numbers in there now. So that's 245 million pounds, right? Plus 24 million pound a year. Um, so let's hang on. Let's just get that back up again. So 130 for Harry. Do you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do it on there because I'm using my mouse. Let me just do it, do it on my phone. This is easier. Let's look at what that would cost a year in, in, in a yearly amount. I mean, it's interesting. 130 million for the player plus 115 for Sancho as an example. So that say they go on five year deals, that's costing forty nine million pound per year if they pay for them. If they pay no big down payment and they do it via amortization, which they're likely to do, it's 40, 49 million a year. Plus they're going to have to pay the agent fees, which are going to be forty odd million pounds between the two of them. Let's just say, and year one that's eighty nine million plus the salaries of twenty four million. That's the basic twenty four million plus maybe another seven and a half million pound ish 
in 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 bonuses it's a lot of money it's a hell of a lot of money there you're, you're looking at over 112 million pound in the first year and then 50 you know and every year after that uh around about the 80 million pound mark huge considering the turnover is around 600 million pounds it's a massive commitment to do both of that while keeping paul pogba to do it you would have to get rid of alexi sanchez in my opinion Oh, it would be tight. It'd be tight as to whether or not that's affordable. I'd need to have a d deeper dive into it. United. Oh, Jesus. I just kicked the camera. It would be close. I mean, have they got the money? Maybe if they sold Paul Pogba, it's absolutely doable. It really is. But it's an interesting one. He says Kane is worth it because he's the best player in the world. He's worth 250 million pound. Someone here says, wow, that's an interesting view. But let's see. I mean, that's that. You know, I might just do a show on that one night and we can start looking at the cost. But what we I don't know is what Man United set as their maximum cap to be spent on, on, on turnover. Remember, net spend doesn't exist in the basic form that computer games and the press tell us. There is no such thing as a war chest. Remember, United have like over 200 million pounds in cash sitting there. There is there is all sorts of things uh, that they can lean on to get this done. I'm just trying to think about it out loud. It's doable. It would be doable to sign them both and keep Pogba, I think. You just need to scrimp and scrape elsewhere. But you are talking of outgoings in year one of over £120 million and then a, an ongoing cost for the next five years. The great thing with Jaden Sancho is, though, is that that cost reduce, reduces significantly in five years. And in five years, he's still a young player. Harry Kane, in five years, what's he going to be in his early 30s? If you could get seven or eight years out of Harry Kane, it, it, it would be worth the investment. Oh, it'd be worth the investment if you started winning titles again. Because that's also what you've got to look at, the additional prize money and, and everything else that comes in through winning titles. You've got to gamble and take that risk. It's an interesting one. It really, really is. But wow. that But that's maybe, maybe that's why though. Maybe, again, would, would Man United, this is a great question. Would Man United be a better team if they sold Pogba so that they had enough money to buy Sancho and, and, and Sancho and Kane and they bought in Grealish. So if they bought in Kane, Grealish, if they bought in Kane, Grealish, and Sancho, but Pogba left, would they be stronger than if they kept Pogba and just signed Sancho? That'd be excuse me, that'd be the question that I would like to pose. I'd love to know what you will think and feel. Comment here says yes, they would. And, I'm, and by the way, I'm, I'm not actually even claiming like, I'm just, put, I'm looking at it from a, from a yeah, straight, uh, this is hypothetical. But in a hypothetical situation, do you think Man United be better or would they be worse? Josh here, one of my uh, members says, uh, endorsements with British players um, on the country's biggest club. I think that would be interesting to see. That is also the other side of it as well. It's the income. It is the income. And I think what Man United need to start negotiating, they've got, it looks like they're going to get a big spurt shirt, new spurt shirt sponsor coming soon. I think Man United need to sit down with, with Adidas and start to renegotiate because Liverpool's new Nike deal is going to change things because li Liverpool, so when Man United renegotiated their Adidas deals, they, they, they got it so that all other merchandise outside of the kits that Man United earned the profits for selling, so lunch boxes and flasks, swimming shorts, whatever it may be. In the back before that, they previously they didn't. That's what that's that's helped increase revenue significantly. If Man United could get a deal that pays them, let's just say the same amount of money each year from from Adidas plus a five, ten, fifteen percent levy on shirt sales, that could be significant. Because I mean, how many shirts is Sancho going to sell globally? Millions. Harry Kane is going to sell millions. And if United could then take, you know, if each, if they could, if they could negotiate some deals with sponsors where any products sold from, you know, in, in relation to those two players, they generate a new income from, it could work. And that's what they would look to do as well. Let's just say, let's just say that they wanted to keep Pogba and sign those two, but they were five, 10% out of turnover from being able to do it comfortably. What they would then go and look to do is maybe borrow the money in the, in the first instance and pay it back on very low interest rates and then spend time working to land new commercial deals. Remember, I, I, I you know, I don't think it'd be long until they, until they name a state until, you know, they, there's their stadium rights. You could still do there's stands. They could still do, uh, you know, different things on the shirts and training kits, but there are certain things that can be sold if that makes sense. And, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. You know, they might even, might even get, you know, quite a few million to talking to Amazon Prime as they come and film a documentary. There, there are all sorts of ways. I mean, pay me, I'll come make a documentary for you. 
<laughs> I'm joking. But do you get what I'm saying? Though? Like, if, if, if no, they wouldn't pay me to do it, would they? It'd be the other way around. So, no, I haven't got the money to do it. But you get my point. So, there's ways they can raise the money. It's an interesting one. I'm sure I'm thinking out loud as I speak, but um, yeah, interesting. Listen, everyone who's tuned in, thank you very much as always. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. God bless. We'll see you at 7 p.m. Bye bye.